Well, um, I worked on study, which is what I'm always working on, the kind of idea that Fred and I developed that we have to find different ways to be together um, in order to really try to come to grips with the world we're facing, but also to try to begin to feel um, the alternative that um, is, is here. Uh, and to do it in this setting was, was in a way, um, disrupting because here we are in this sort of idyllic uh, place. Um, and given an ideal situation, uh, eager students, uh, smart, diverse, and, and um, engaged, um, a, a very welcoming, and hospitable uh, administration of the program. And yet, at the same time, we know that this beautiful scenery is in crisis, that you know, this, these glaciers are melting. Um, so um, we had both the, uh, the, 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 the time and the space to do the kind of study we want, but always behind it, this urgency that um, we both had to work with, but also against, um, if we were going to try to try to really follow, for instance, Denise's lead in, in escaping this implauded time and space um, to, to, to try to, um, to, try to uh, create something better. Yeah, um, well, we worked on figuring out how to have fun um, doing what we do, which is teaching and studying and reading and thinking. And it was easy to see that we had fun because we were doing it together. Um, I'm basically pretty clear now that I had, all, I had been clear for a long time that I didn't really want to write anything by myself anymore. And so I've been so glad to be in collaboration with Stefano and with some other people in terms of writing. And now I really realize that I don't want to teach by myself anymore. And I have to figure out how to avoid that. Um, it, obviously, the classroom setting is one in which, ideally, you could call it collaborative. Um, but often, the possibilities of collaboration are kind of undermined by this kind of top-down structure, which is usually a, there's a soloist in a group. Um, and a, a single soloist tends to often drown out the group, even, even, even if the single soloist is spewing out all of his good intentions and good thoughts about collaboration and group work. So with the four of us working together and playing and thinking together, it actually opened up, I think, much more space than I'm usually able to open up by myself for students. And what we realized is, first of all, how how brilliant they were and how open they were and how willing they were to work with us and to challenge us and, and push us and, and to also be challenged and pushed by us. Um, so I'm thankful for the opportunity to come here because it gave, gave me a chance and gave us a chance to see um, the necessity of another way, the necessity of the other way that we had been dreaming about but had never been able to enact and now that we've been able to enact it i think we're, we're spoiled <laughs> now we're not don't want to go back you know, mm -hmm. so to speak i love that uh, this collaboration ended up being something that was different but mm -hmm. egs itself is also that space for collaboration and for you to experiment mm -hmm. uh, either of you want to say anything about that mm -hmm. egs is a space mm -hmm. well it was just an open, welcoming space for us to try something different. Mm -hmm. And and also we we came, you know, with a with a kind of loose head arrangement of what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We had some texts in mind, some films in mind, and mm -hmm. it was organized around Edouard Glissant's um, Poetics of Relation. But we didn't have everything much more planned out in detail than that. And so we were able to improvise with one another, to listen to one another and with one another, um, to respond, I think, in a, in a good way to the students' questions and concerns and their, um, 
and I and I think that openness, that that capacity to build our seminar together in 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 collaboration with one another, rather than to have everything planned out and to be beholden and constrained by a syllabus, that that was something new and again something that we're not always used to. So I'll always be happy and grateful to have had this chance and I don't know where else we would have had it. And certainly haven't had it before. Yeah. So um, so that so so in this respect EGS is, is a unique place and a and a and a great place. I was thinking, <clears throat> you know, I was speaking to some of the students about this. Um, and they said, look, while we were here, um, I was reading the work of our friend Fumio Kiji, mm -hmm. who wrote a great book on jazz, and a uh, notifi notification came through that Toni Morrison had died. Sorry, I just, I don't know you guys are getting the same message, but Toni Morrison just died. Oh, oh what? Wow. In the middle of that reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> jazz. Uh, yeah. And I was speaking so, to the students, let's, let's and they said, you know, if this had happened in our regular university, the professor probably would have said, okay, we should all go home, we'll just break, right? But because EGS was this different space, instead what happened was this amazing thing where we, we all sort of, well, basically we all sort of looked towards Mantia. It's called playing in the dark. <laughs> um, and, and we really mm -hmm. needed him, and he, he knew he was needed, and he, he made this beautiful, uh, memorial for us. I think Tony has done, I mean, you know, if you talk about black thought, she, she was so brave. Mm -hmm. A great writer, you can see. Uh, but the way first touching people like Angela Davis and editing them for a major publishing house, and then she literally with Alice Walker and they resuscitated Zora Neale Hurston and put black feminism mm -hmm. on the map. I mean, uh, I was a student in the U.S. then. It's like, again, everything you know, throw it out. You got to know this one. <laughs> and, you know, uh, so those beginnings, she was a... And, as a very incredible moment in the New York Times when she became so incontournable, unavoidable as an author, people began to put pressure on her to say, are you just a writer or a black writer or a woman writer? And this is a famous moment where she said, I'm, I'm a writer, a black woman writer, and that's actually saying more, mm -hmm. you know. And it just, and in New York, she just was brave. She was, I mean, uh, Fred was talking about black intellectual. The, the public intellectual takes a lot of risks because everything you say could be used to stop going to you. And Baldwin could navigate it. Tony was not afraid. So literally people were looking for Tony to say something. And she was not afraid to say what she wanted to say. So I don't really think Tony would want. I don't know, maybe last all talk, I don't think she would want anything from us. We need to go and read her more mm -hmm. and get things from her. She did so much and oh God. Um, just 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 by giving us a feeling of 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 well, what what does Cedric call it? Uh, the um, <clears throat> the what totality the uh, the, ontological. the the ontological totality you know like uh, his strength was amazing uh, and and I don't know if that would have happened if we hadn't been in a space at EGS with each other uh, and with the students in the way we were um, and certainly of course it couldn't have happened without uh, Montia's presence so I think that had to do with EGS too and. Uh, if we had to face that news, it was, it was the place to face it. Yeah. The other thing that I heard uh, at breakfast today is how much the students love the course. You know. Okay. Um, what was your experience with the students? Well, it, it was great. I mean, they, first of all, it was just nice to be able to interact with students, you know, 
on the tram riding up and down the hill or walking up and down the hill or at you know at the at the rock cafe you know the other night mm -hmm. um there was a kind of ease of interaction as a function of us all being here in relatively close quarters that was really cool mm -hmm. um but then there was also just this overwhelming sense once we were in the classroom together that they had a tremendous amount to offer you mm -hmm. know um and that they had all these other things to offer that we didn't have mm -hmm. you know whether it was you know felipe's work as an architect and and as a, an architectural theorist and critic mm -hmm. you know and you know isaac's experience as a you know in in his own sort of emerging brilliant engagement with black thought you know or i mean i can name you know you know matthew's the intensity of his commitment to, to theology and, and to science and how he brought that to bear on what we were doing. Um, there was just, you know, we had we had everything. We had, um, you know, David, the enlightened essentialist, you know, and um, Tracy, the poet, you know, we, I mean, I can't mention all the students, but, you know, Amira and what she brought to us from West Oakland and what she brought to us as a function of this deep engagement that she has with, with Hannah Arendt, you know. Um, we were thinking by way of her, you know, Hannah Arendt in relation to Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, it was, there was just a kind of richness to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, I don't think, what I would say is, it's probably, there's probably that much richness in any classroom setting. The question is like how to get at it, mm -hmm. and under the what under what auspices can it be can it be engaged can it be accessed, um, and how can it be accessed in a way that's not violent that's not brutal, um, mm -hmm. and and something happened here, which again hasn't happened other places that I've taught, and I think a lot of it was because of being able to teach together with with Matia and Denise mm -hmm. and Stefano. But that all comes back to the fact that this was a place where we were able to do it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then this is also a place that attracts particular kind of student, you know, who's open to, to the mix and to, mm -hmm. to relation, you know, as mm -hmm. Lisa and Manche would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, at first when I came, I was anxious that, um, I knew that I wanted to be with my friends, and I knew that I wanted to learn from Montia, who I'd never met, and I was eager to meet. And I wondered how that would fit with the students. But then I realized the more we were with each other and learning from each other, the more we were able to find ourselves with the students and the students with us. And I had this amazing experience where I, I was sort of blocked um, around a, a question that was asked around, uh, around our notion of fugitivity. Is it possible that marinage is to fugitivity as something like obscurity is to um, We'd explained it so many times in so many ways. And as the question was coming back, I was thinking, well, is this coming back because we just never have done it right? But the person who asked, one of the students, Laura, um, she just, uh, uh, Paula, Paula. Paula, sorry, Paula, um, she just, uh, in the way that she asked it and in her willingness for me to, to sound out ideas about how to answer it. It was one of those moments where a teacher rarely acknowledges that, that you need a student to learn, you know, because the direction is so much the other way. But without her question and her willingness to watch me try to answer it, I wouldn't have learned how to answer it. And, and I think we wouldn't have had another way to fold in our work together because of her. So <clears throat> the students would, ended up being crucial to our conversation. Um, it was not a matter of us coming, coming to them. We, we came to each other, and that was beautiful. Mm -hmm.